today on Coach a la carte. Perry! What's up, Coach? What's up, buddy? Should I untie us and, and head out? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's do cool. this. This is so cool. It's not a bad place to call your workspace. Oh, sh I'm gonna make him shuck it. This will be my first oyster. I want to race. Oh, you know how to do this, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is excellent. That's all today on Coach a la carte. That's me, Jim Fleming, head coach of URI football. Football is being pushed back for obvious reasons. Since I've got some time on my hands, I've decided to hit the road to see what fall in Rhode Island is really like. Because for me, the only thing that comes close to football is enjoying some great food with great friends. So join me as I visit some of the best restaurants in Rhode Island on Coach a la carte. What's happening, man? How are you? I'm doing outstanding, other than we're not playing football. I know, I know. Wish we were getting ready for UNH, huh, this weekend? See, we had a big weekend playing. Yeah. You know, we had the golf tournament on Friday and then UNH on Saturday, but you know things are different. Got my knee fixed up about a yeah. week ago and kind of cruised around, but I figured I'd get in, get in touch with you and let's go uh, hang out with Perry a little bit, show you yeah. a couple of things around Rhode Island. You know it's the greatest state in the world. I love the ocean state. Amen. So okay. let's go check out Perry. Yeah, you're gonna drive, I heard? I'm not driving, we got somebody to take care of us, All but right. uh, we're good to go. Let's do it. All right, man. All right, we are rocking. Well, here's the deal, bro. No football. Yeah. So what are you doing, Rhode Island? You go down towards the water. And I bumped into Perry Rosso. You know Perry? Yeah, yeah. But you know, he runs Matunic Oyster Bar. He's had nice. it and he's grown that thing. And so Perry and I went out fishing. We went out and we caught two, maybe three bluefin tuna. Really? Right, probably about 60 miles south of Montauk. It was really cool. That's excellent. But Perry was there and we got a chance to hook up. You know, I've known mm -hmm. him since I've been here. We got to talking on the boat and he said, why don't you uh, come on down and bring stone? And Excellent. I'll show you the, the oyster farm and show you, you know, what we do over the restaurant. And I said, that's a good way to spend the morning. Yeah, that's excellent. It's a really cool setup. I mean, the guy, you know, has got the place right at the north tip of the salt pond. Yep. Excellent. And then, you know, he's got natural farms there, which he supplies his restaurant with. Then he goes down and he's studied aquaculture forever and, and created his system in the salt ponds to be able to you know, basically harvest oysters. And, you know, I've been around the country and I love oysters. I don't know about yeah. you. You like them? Well, here's the thing. My, I think the correct term would be my palate's expanding. <laughs> Good I was call. never, uh, I was never a, a seafood uh, child, but now as a, as a young adult, I have, uh, I tried a stuffy for the first time this summer. Yeah. Which was fantastic. Shrimp guy. But I'm, 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 I'm ready to try anything that, that comes my way. I like the stage of young adult. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. a pretty good one. <laughs> Perry's very well received around uh, our university. A great friend to, uh, to the athletic department, to your program, and uh, I'm excited to, to get to see him again. Well, he's a rock star, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, you see him front and center at the basketball games. I mean, he's a hard guy not to miss because yeah. he's built like a refrigerator, you that's know. Right. He's that's just, right. And you can tell why, you know, when you start seeing his whole operation. I mean, the guy puts some serious work in, but anybody who I bring in from out of town, you know, their first question is, can we get down to Matuna? Yeah. yeah. Can't tell you how enlightening it was when we got back, when the, the kids got back. Sure. You know, we had that first team meet and we put them out on the field and spread them out. Awesome. It was really pretty cool because it's been, you know, shoot, since March, since we've seen them, and it's really the longest time I've been around, away from football players in probably 30 some odd years. I think, I think you're right though, just to see, you know, people there, right? Your athletes and, and students in general, just kind of coming back and flowing through campus has been a, a pretty good sign thus far. Uh, well, you got three alumni in the NFL right now, right? You got Coulter, Parker, Murphy, but the, the negative side of that is you got to find guys to now replace them and step up, right? So offensive side of the ball, you know, there'll be, there'll be probably some holes you got to fill and whatnot, but I'm sure just like you said, it's a brand new team. Guys are eager to just get back out there and, and compete for some of these these holes that need to be filled. We've got a really exciting new team. You know, we've got quarterbacks, you know, stacked up, ready to go compete. I think that the pieces are falling together. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the new schematic structures, both offensively and defensively, will, you know, fit our kids and 
give us an edge going into it. There's a process that's certainly being missed, but uh, we're making the best of it by heading down to the beach on a right. normal Thursday in the fall. Are you kidding me? This part of the, our state is just, it's different, I feel. There's so much you can do in, uh, you know, what everybody else from the outside looking in just sees as the smallest state in the country. Uh, you are hitting the nail on the head. I mean, it's incredible. This area here down on the South Shore is as good as you're gonna get on the East Coast. Sure. And then you sit there and, and ride up the road 45 minutes and you're in the middle of Providence in one of the finest little cities in the country. Yeah. And then you can go off into the west side of the state and you feel like you're back in West Virginia, <laughs> you know? And they're all 45 minutes away. A 45 minute drive is one we all have to pack a lunch. You gotta pack a lunch, yeah. <laughs> no. Sometimes a spare change of clothes too because oh, you no. just don't know what you're gonna get into. I'm really excited to see what the new deck is on the third floor. That's right, that's right. I mean, that's got to be one of the most phenomenal views in the state of Rhode Island because I think you probably see on a good day, probably see Block Island while you're eating your sushi appetizer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's got so much going on down here and uh, it continues to grow too and it's a testament to really his work and just his ideas as a business owner, but I think we're pulling off on it now. Here it comes. Perry! What's up, coach? What's up, buddy? How you guys doing? You know Stone, right? Yeah. How are you, Perry? See ya. How's it going? Take us out? Yeah. Good Let's to see do you, it. Brother. Thanks for doing it. Thanks for coming. Good day, man. It is beautiful, no wind. Look at this. Yeah, this is the new uh, farm tour barge. We got it last year. Stoner, we went out the other day. We yeah. went bluefin fishing with Jim Clapp, and I told you that on the way over. And, and I got pictures of Perry sitting there. You know, battling this fish. It was after I was just getting crushed by one, and he's just sitting there beasting this <laughs> thing. And I'm saying, geez, it would make me feel weak. But then it ran on him, and I felt a hell of a lot better. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it got all the way up there, and it shoot, went right down. Well, this is awesome. Man. Yeah, this is great. We went out. We went what about when you first got the boat with Cruz oh, and right. those guys. That's right. And that was a really interesting thing. And I said, you know, talk to Stone. I said, hey, we got no football. We're supposed to be playing New Hampshire. It's a Thursday, we're usually having a light practice getting ready for those guys, but so let's go down and see you. And I'm sure it's been a little bit of a challenge trying to battle all the new restrictions and whatnot, but you're navigating that too, right? Yeah, yeah, it's always always a battle, but uh, it's always a battle anyway. Right. So we actually we actually put tables on the boat now. For lunch and dinner, we'll have like three tables on here. We put people on the picnic table, people on the roof, That's right. as much outdoor seating as we can get. Yeah. Should I untie us and, and head out? Yeah, let's yeah, do let's it. do this. Cool. Coach, you want to take a dip after, or? You know, that would really be, I really always wanted to do that. I wanted to go ahead and jump in and either float when the yeah. current, because look at that thing. I mean, it's it's cranking. Yeah, so this is the only inlet in and out of the pond, and it and it cranks right through this. It's a narrow inlet, and you'll see it really gets shallow right here. You can see some striped bass in the water sometimes. Uh, there's like a, there's a steep drop off. So this is the deepest salt pond in Rhode Island at 23 feet. It was formed by a glacier thousands of years ago that made a depression in the earth. That depression filled in with salt water and um, it uh, created this unique estuary salt pond. I mean, I saw you one time coming in against this current. I mean, that's no joke driving the boat. No, it's definitely tricky. Uh, so we'll be coming against the current when we on the way in. But yeah, docking the boat is always an adventure. But the farm is shallow. It's only around three. But that, that, that's the end of the, that's where your farms are, right? Yeah, the vegetable farm is all the way to the north end of the pond up there. This is so cool. It's awesome. I mean, you can see the, his third deck up there. Yeah. How about eating dinner there? I mean, people must wait for hours, right? Just to get up there? Not anymore. Now we have the reservation system, but sometimes people come and they, they want to wait for the upstairs, so they'll wait a little bit, but not hours. So we'll pull up to the oyster farmers here. Are these guys out all year long? Uh, yeah, all year long. They're on they're working the farm. We start the oysters in a hatchery. You get the oysters to uh, spawn by raising the temperature. 
uh, and they get put their male and female gametes in the water, creates a fertilized larvae, a little soft-bodied animal. That larvae floats around in the water, and uh, in the nature, it tries to attach onto a rock or a shell to undergo metamorphosis and crystallize calcium carbonate and stay there. Uh, at, uh, in a hatchery, what they do is they crush up clamshell and they let the oysters uh, larvae attach onto that little piece of clamshell and it starts as a little piece of sand. Uh, you get like 10 million of them. One million fits in about the volume of a grapefruit. And we put them in a nursery system called the upweller, which pumps the water by the oysters at an increased rate, which boosts the growth rate from one millimeter to about 15 millimeters. At that point, we put them in these sturdy plastic mesh bags. You know, these guys are all the same age, but they're all totally different size classes. They grow at different rates, even though they're spawned from the same parents, same brood stock, they grow totally different. So uh, what they're doing is they're stocking the bags at around uh, 1,200 per bag at this size and then one liter scoop is 1,200 oysters. After a few weeks or a few months of growing, that bag needs to be emptied out. If you keep the big ones in the same uh, bag as the small ones, the big ones will outcompete the small ones. So you separate them. That's farming. It's parasites, predators, disease every step of the way. We're constantly trying to increase growth and survival, decrease mortality and predation. From when the time they're this small to the time they're harvested, we're constantly separating the big ones from the small ones. You gotta do that all by hand, too? We'll take those bags, empty them out in the tote, and then put them in the hopper, and the hopper goes up a conveyor and into this drum. This drum spins around. Uh, the smallest ones come out at the beginning of the drum and the biggest ones come out at the end. And uh, we put them all back in the water in their respective size classes. So that oyster is, that's the young of the year. Those, are, uh, those were spawned in April. So these are uh, some of the medium to fast growers from this year. We got so that grew there. from a millimeter yep. to that size. Yep. And then after, and this is the next, uh, this is the next year class after, uh, you know, after, once they're big enough, about an inch and a half, they're unlikely to be preyed upon by predators. So we put them in these sturdy uh, trays that keep them off the sea floor, and that allows more water to flow through them. You see all that, that's new growth, all that. On the outside yeah. lip. One of the things we do when we tumble the oysters is we break that new growth off, and it slows the growth down, but it, it's good for the oyster because it creates a thicker shell and a nicer cup. And, um, you know, it, and that's really what chefs want. They want a consistent product with a nice thick cup. Yeah. So we used to do it manually. We used to just shake the bags one, two, three, and throw it in the water. Now we put it in that tumbler and that, uh, the tumbler does it for us. How does something like this affect the environment? So oysters and all filter feeders are good for the environment because of how they feed. Oysters being filter feeders eat microscopic plants, phytoplankton, that are naturally occurring in the water. Phytoplankton are not bad for the environment, but in an abundance, they can lead to a fish kill um, and, or low oxygen levels. And phytoplankton photosynthesize when the sun comes up, uh, and when the sun goes down, they can't photosynthesize, so they respirate, they breathe, they take oxygen out of the water. So oysters and other filter feeding organisms reduce that uh, likelihood of happening because it increases oxygen because they eat the phytoplankton. And they uh, use it for uh, growth, reproduction, energy. They you know, really take something uh, the phytoplankton and, and put it into a usable form that we take out of the water, consume, and then we use for energy. Now I could be someone that, um, you know, isn't uh, someone who cares about the environment, but because my farm and my business relies on the environment, I'm financially invested in making sure that this water body stays clean. Not a bad place to call your workspace. Right. It's a nice office. It's a good office. Look at this guy, man. Guys of the sea have always been my heroes. So we put these bags in these uh, floating trays. They're kind of like filed away in these trays. And so we stack them so we have the ability to keep them away from mud crabs. Mud crabs are the biggest, most efficient predator. Well, they're small, but they're very efficient predators. And so that floating gear helps keep them away from those predators. So what do you do with those? Do you crush them? Uh, you can crush them. This is initially what they go in, these sturdy plastic mesh bags at about nine millimeter. These are a little smaller than what we're looking at on the dock. So when will these be ready to harvest? Uh, maybe two or three years. We sell around a million oysters to market size and we sell around five million oyster seed to other farmers. So we'll sell oyster seed when it's about this size. Uh, the bigger they are, the less likely they are to, to, um, to die. So the, when they're really small, we lose around you know, 15 to 25% in the nursery system. Uh, the first winter, we might lose another 15%. If they make it to the next summer, uh, you know, the likelihood of them making is, is making it to market size is around 90%. And actually, you know, I'll show you here, as the oysters grow, we put them in larger mesh bags. <clears throat> there's all sorts of stuff that grows on the bags. These are bryozoans, and then there's uh, 
uh, these, these things grow in these, this orange, that's an encrusting tuna kit or a soft coral that will cover the entire bag. So it competes with the oysters for food, but it doesn't directly harm the oyster. The, the real problem it causes is it restricts water flow. A lot of these will be able to get to market size by the end of next summer. It's very labor intensive. You know, you think about industrialized terrestrial agriculture, traditional agriculture as we know it, been going on for hundreds of years. Aquaculture on an industrial scale, really relatively new. So we're still figuring out best methods. Let's show throw these guys back in the water and I'll show you the, the final grow out system. Still don't know what to do with the mud crab. I feel bad, you know, the mud crab, you put it down, it's gonna kill an oyster. If you don't kill the mud crab, what happens? So this is what we'll harvest the market size guys out of. These guys are ready, ready to go. You want to try one? Sure. All right. Oh, I'm gonna make him shuck it. I wanted a race, man. I want a race. Oh, you, oh, you know how to do this, huh? No. <laughs> no, but you know I'm game for just about anything. So what you want to do is you want to get in the hinge. That's the oldest part of the oyster, or called the umbo, and it grows up like a fan. You got to see concentric rings from uh, the end of a growth season. So that's one year and two years. You want to get the knife in there and you want to use this motion like this and get that adductor muscle to pop. The adductor muscle keeps the shells together. It's two thirds of the way up the oyster to the right. Same muscle that brings our arms in. So you pop that muscle just a little bit, slide the knife in there and sever that top muscle. And there's the adductor muscle scar. And then you have to sever it from the bottom. Make sure it's free. And then proper to ways to get it all, right? Outstanding. All right. Yeah, that's salty, man. Yeah, they're definitely briny. So what time are we looking at? Right now? 9.18. Earliest I've ever eaten an oyster in another first, bro. Cool. That's so cool. I'll shuck one. shuck one. Yeah, here? I'd love to shuck one, yeah. Stone's got to eat it. I'll eat one. This will be my first oyster. Let's try it. I shouldn't be admitting this as a Rhode Islander, but here I am. You know, I'm probably getting too many shells in there, right? It's all right. He won't know the difference. It's his first one. That is true. Old adductor muscle is history. And now this is the big moment of you truth. Just take it like a swig it back. You just throw it about and there you go. Yeah. I'll have another one. Jake. Awesome. Give it away. That was great. <laughs> now you got to open it. I got to open one now? Now you got to open it. All right, let's try it. All right, so right here, right? Kind of, yep, just kind of pry it up. Use that angle with a knife to pry it. Yeah, it looks like you got it if you keep doing that angle. That, that, that's the motion right there. Oh, yeah, you got it. So the muscle's right there. You want to just kind of slice the muscle right there. Right there in the middle there? The muscle's, uh, yeah, so it's hold, it held together by a little muscle right there, so you just have to sever it. Yeah. Right? Top the shell, top off, not, it's not bad, not pretty bad, good. Huh? didn't sever the muscle, I guess. No, that was all salt water. Salt that was water. all salt water. <laughs> I just took a shot the of salt water. Rookie right there, buddy. It's, it's the pressure of, uh, of the yeah. cameras. That too was excellent. I recommend. Another experience yeah. in the Stone Freeman. That's pretty good. So you guys want to go check out the rooftop? Been dying to. All right, yep. let's do it. All right. Thanks again, guys. Nice to meet you too. How long has this been open up here now? We opened the roof deck in the beginning of June. Wow. All right, tell us about the food there, Perry. All right, that is a grilled oyster. This is a bourbon oyster. That's the Oyster Rockefeller, Clams Casino, tuna tacos, jumbo shrimp. Well, this is excellent. That is excellent. First lobster roll. It's great though, this is excellent. My first one of these too. This is great. You're getting the education stone. I'll tell you what, it's a huge closer in recruiting and we've done that 
a few times, you know, bringing our real special recruits up here. And we've landed them all, thanks to Perry. Because, I mean, they all walk away. They say, oh my gosh, I mean, you, your school's seven miles away from here and you can have access to this. I said, yeah. You're bringing kids to campus. You're sitting there saying, here's the educational value. Here's the sports value. And here's the crab legs. And then here's the crab legs, <laughs> right on. So there's some, a lot of people you look at and you can see, and I can look at Stone's face, I can look at your face, and I can envision like I do everybody who, who would look proper inside the football helmet, and <laughs> you're going to go ahead and get the nod before I go with you, Stone. No, nothing personal, brother, but, uh, you know, he, he, he would be the one that you'd have to, he'd just squeeze that thing on and it'd be ready to go, and I know what kind of look you'd have in your eye for sure. I went to high school, I was, you know, center and, and uh, D-line, so I was the smallest guy in the field playing the big guy positions, but I loved it, you know, I'd get some leverage and uh, I loved it. That was the key word, leverage. I mean, there's nothing worse than being a bigger guy and you go against someone who doesn't have the height and they're up in your body all day long. You've got some pros and cons, we'll say. <laughs> when we pulled out in the van this morning, I had no clue that this was in store today. Get a meal, go out on the boat. Well, Perry, that was an outstanding day. That was fun. Like I said, I, 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 if I was not coaching football, I'll do this every day. So I'll be back tomorrow morning. All right, we'll I'll see. I'll go and help the people out there and shake some of those nets. I don't think that'll last too long for me, but I'll get you some waiters. No, but again, I mean, we appreciate everything you've done from URI, and you know, but this day was outstanding. I, I appreciate having you guys. Thank you. All right, man. Yeah, we got to go COVID friendly there. When I was even a missed bump, so we got to do it again. Today was an amazing adventure. Going out to see my good friend Perry Rosso at his restaurant, the Matunic Oyster Bar, is always a great time. Between the relaxing boat ride, this is heaven right here, bro. God dang. Shucking oysters at the oyster farm. Well, you didn't sever the muscle, I guess. No, that was all salt water. Salt water. Salt water. Salt water. <laughs> I just took a shot Rookie of salt water. Air, right? And eating some of the freshest seafood at one of the best restaurants around. Today was one for the books.